I was asked by a couple of people if I could do a tutorial on how I do eyeballs. So that's what I'm gonna do. So to start, let's talk about how the eyeball is placed inside our skulls. Because a lot of people want to make it much larger than it would actually be. It doesn't actually take up that much space. You need room for all the muscles and the fat even, and all kinds of things to help the eye move around inside the skull. So there's actually a lot of space around the eyeball, surrounding the eye, inside the skull. So the eye itself, we've got the optic nerve, which is what I use to make the fly tail. And how I used to draw eyeballs. <laughs> You've got the cornea here, right? Comes out a little bit. I used to put the pupil here and the iris there, and that is wrong. <laughs> Uh, what actually is going on is you have the clear cornea and the iris and the pupil are set in. The pupil is actually a hole. Light goes in. And that's how we're seeing things, right? The pupil gets larger or smaller depending on how much light is going in. Also changes depending on emotions. Completely different emotions going on just by the pupils. Unless you're drawing anime, sometimes you'll see the whole iris pupil situation together shrinks and that's a, a stylistic thing it's for emphasis it's not particularly realistic but it's fun so now we're going to talk about other parts of the eye and other shapes you use to make an eyeball this is the i think it's called a caruncle i emphasize it a lot when i draw and other people don't the eyelid on the bottom is going to be more visible than the one on the top and it doesn't need to be particularly thick I often make it thicker, some styles ignore it entirely, some styles ignore the inside corner. Like I said, I like to draw it. Your eyelashes either way are going to start after, underneath the eyelid, if you're going to draw that part, that little inner eyelid. And yeah, it's best to just look at eyeballs, right? Draw a bunch of people's eyes. Look at reference. And you'll see that they come in different shapes and styles. <laughs> Again, we're talking about the skull shape, right? skull versus muscle versus skin versus fat. Your eyeball is going to be sitting within all of this. And you've got your brow bone. Obviously the eyebrow is going to move with different expressions. The lid is going to open and close. You can show shocked versus how you're doing the pupil and how open the eye is. You're going to see more whites of the eyes if they're shocked. Whereas if you're angry, everything's all scrunched up. And if you're happy, you're going to see some wrinkles, right? Everything's scrunched in a different way. I am making this iris and pupil too large, but it's fine. Someone asked specifically how I draw the iris, how I make the texture. Usually I don't do that much detail anyway, unless it's like really close up. But this is one method. It's a lot of building on top of itself. Because if you look at an iris, you've got a lot of like spaces and different textures and different lines going on and every eye is different this is another you know use reference look at something look at an eyeball in front of you and uh, this is just one of many different ways to do it and different styles will obviously ask you to do it different ways when I'm shading I take into account the upper eyelid more than anything else and then the roundness of the eyeball because it is a ball and we're looking at the light source, and again, even though the pupil is a hole that light goes into, you're going to have reflections on it because it's underneath something else. It's like looking at a window, right? You've got this clear pane of glass that's obviously not glass, it's your eyeball. And you're looking through that into the pupil and the iris. So another way to do an, an iris, you do those kinds of scribbles. I, I try to make everything kind of even-ish around, but that, again, real eyeballs don't work that way. So you need to play with it and futz around how much you want to blend, how much you want to keep stark contrast, what you want your eyeball to look like. I, I like a softer blending for a little bit more of a natural look. A little less lines, a little less harshness. This is just a, a sketch to show you what I'm talking about, but as much detail as you need for whatever it is specifically that you are making. And obviously when it's farther away, it looks so much nicer. Here we have that page from Entropy Head that I showed at the very, very beginning. Every now and then there's going to be eyes in the walls because, <laughs> of course, it's a comic book about mental health and mental illness. 
but uh, I wanted the eyes to be as realistic as possible while blending into the wall. And that's why I'm only using the colors of the wall itself. Effectively the same way I would do it in black and white, except the palette is this color. I wanted the eyes to be looking in different directions, not necessarily at him. He's in the door off to the right. And I wanted them to be a little bit different, slightly different shapes, slightly different colors. And you can see the way I'm deciding how to do the shading and all that. I want to put some shading underneath <laughs> the iris, but I, I think it works out. And then I need my highlights, because I want these eyeballs to look a little wet, you know, as wall eyes should be. So let's talk about eye shape. I mentioned it before. You can have heavy hooded eyelids. That's arguably what mine are. Also like Jessica Rabbit, you know? I don't look like Jessica Rabbit. But you can have an eyelid that's more tucked under. Lots and lots of different shapes. Even though you have an eyeball underneath there either way, the eyelids take different shapes, obviously based on your genetics. And look, an experiment. If you're sick, if you're high, this changes your eyes just as much as your expression. So you will have the redness in your eye and puffy eyes, or your pupil will be larger or smaller, depending on all those things. So keep that in mind too. Eyes can get really gross and really scary looking. Or they can be bright-eyed and not so bushy-tailed, but you know what I mean. So the way I do a fly, <laughs> it is a human eyeball. I try to make it as eyeball as possible. And there we have, again, what I use as the tail, because flies need balance. <laughs> and so I, I make them like semi-realistic. But either way, the point is, have fun. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any other questions, more specific things for me to draw upon, because I was just mostly spitballing here, uh, let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if there's something else you'd like me to go over in general. It doesn't have to be eyeball related. Rock on!